20s and he was 53 at the time. He was very at the kind of near the height of his power of a, as a senator at that time. And um, he knew what he could get away with and, and sort of just had this um, uh, like image that he could get away with whatever he wanted. Invincible. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you know, I, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I've said that many times publicly. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. Um, I won't be voting Republican. But, you know, one of the things that's the most important thing is, is legacy. And I looked at my daughter, and when I came forward in, in 2019, she said, Mom, he's too powerful. And that was like, now I have to come forward because the person's powerful, that's, that's not right. We have to stop that perpetuation generationally. Joe Biden has said women are to be believed. They should start with the presumption that they're telling the truth. Do you feel as though you've been given that presumption? No, I think that's a hypocritical statement um, because that's not been my experience. And he has said that in public, but then what's been happening is with social media um, and in the media, I've been pretty attacked and smeared. And some of his campaign supporters and surrogates have been the ones doing the attacks. Kamala Harris is now Joe Biden's mm-hmm. running mate mm-hmm. after saying that she believed mm-hmm. some of Joe Biden's accusers. Right. How does that sit with you? But do you, you think there is an element of hypocrisy for her to have said that and to now be his running mate? Yeah, I think there's um, hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. All right, I'm ready. So the question for you is, is somebody who has a relationship with the Vice President Biden, what message would you give to the women who feel like their space has been invaded in the past by the Vice I believe them and I, I respect um, them being able to tell their story and I'm encouraged to do it. Do you believe that the Vice President should have this race? Oh, I, he's going to have to make that decision for himself. I wouldn't tell him what to do. You saw him up close as a politician. Correct. What kind of political operator is he? The kind where he smiles. It's like a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Here I am in the Senate office. Long before Joe Biden was a household name across America. And here's my my desk. Tara Reid worked in his Senate office in the early 90s. Here's a good picture of Senator Biden. It was her dream job. She hoped it was the start of a long career in politics. He was a political hero of mine because I bought into the image. And I really believed he was someone to not only admire, but also I wanted to be like him. Like I had hoped to be maybe a senator or a congressperson someday. And here's the view from my window. You sound really happy. Yeah. There is my computer and there's my posters. I was such like a little puppy, like so eager and happy. Yeah. Tara says it wasn't long, though, before her political hero turned into a predator. He would just put his hands on me. He would, um, whenever there was a meeting or if I would see him, usually he'd put his hand on his shoulder and then he'd run his fingers up underneath my hair, on my neck, and things like that. And I had never experienced that with a boss before. And I didn't know him. It's not like there was like small talk, like where we would, you know what I'm saying? There was no reciprocal relationship or flirtation. There was nothing like that. So it was just very much him coming into a room, putting his hand on me or, or whatever. Did you ever tell him, don't do that to me? No, no. I was too scared to say that. I didn't say anything. Did he touch other women? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just didn't, he seemed to lack boundaries with women. Some might try to pass the behaviour off as a sign of the times. Reid was among several women who said Biden had touched them inappropriately. It's now threatened to undermine his bid for the White House. No, that ain't right, man. That ain't right. But it's a pattern of behaviour that remains today. Those Joe Biden shoulder massages, they're like magic. (laughs) You should try one. Oh, you have. Joe Biden recently vowed to be more mindful of personal space after seven women came forward with claims of inappropriate touching. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. But I'll always believe governing, quite frankly, life for that matter, is about connecting, about connecting with people. That won't change. 
But what Tara Reid claims happened 27 years ago in an open corridor of the Senate is much worse. So we were alone in this corridor and he said my name and then the next thing I knew, he pushed me and up against the wall, he kind of pushed, he moved towards, moved his body towards me and then um, he used his knee to separate my legs. He, he said, um, he's, he said, I he said, I want to fuck you. And he was whispering in my ear and he was kissing me and I was trying to get away from him. And, um, then when I pulled away, um, you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, he had taken his hands and put them down my skirt and taken one hand and um, penetrated me with his fingers. And when I pulled away, he pulled back and he seemed, he looked at me like kind of almost annoyed. And he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. And that's when he got, I could see that he was angry and he put his finger kind of towards my face. And he said, you know, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. In Tara's account, it was a senator's word against a first-year assistant. So she kept quiet, only breaking down to her mother on the phone. She was telling me to go to the police right then, like to go to the police and to keep what I was wearing and on and to go to the police. Why did you resist going to the police? And, you know, they're there to protect the senators and congressmen. They're not there to protect us. It would be two long years in 1995 before Tara told anybody else about the alleged assault, confiding in her neighbour, Linda Lacasse. She basically said that he had um, put her up against the wall. He put his hands up her skirt and he put his fingers inside her. What did you say? I said, I think you should file a police report. So she was upset. She was crying. Did you doubt what she was saying at all? No, I didn't. What prompted you to come forward and publicly corroborate her story? I felt that, the, that I needed to tell the truth. Did Tara ask you to come forward? I volunteered. You filed a written complaint to the Senate, mm -hmm. but in it you only mention Biden's inappropriate behaviour. You don't mention the sexual assault. And I'm wondering why you wouldn't mention that, because there is a very big difference between inappropriate behaviour mm -hmm. and sexual assault. Because I was afraid to. I mean, I consciously did that. The way they had it set up at that time, it was you fill out this form and hand it back. I didn't know who was reading it, and I was too scared. So I thought at a one-on-one -on -one that I would reveal that and talk about it, but I didn't feel comfortable. After nothing came of the harassment complaint, she says she filed to the Senate in the 90s. Tara Reid emotionally describing what she says happened in the spring of 1993. It wasn't until describing 2019 that Tara Senator then Joe shared Biden her story publicly, saying that Joe Biden touched her in ways that made her uncomfortable. But, just like her formal complaint at the time, it was only half a story. She says she wasn't ready to talk about the alleged sexual assault. So what changed for you? What made you think, no, nah, I'm going to tell the full truth? I decided that people needed to know he's going to the highest office of the land. He's running on a platform of character. Well, I know what he's like. I know what his character's like. And he doesn't deserve the presidency based on what happened to me. In March this year, Reid came forward with what she said was the full story. By then, many in politics and the media were already questioning her version of events. Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. And Joe Biden spoke out strongly, denying the allegations. In every case, the truth is what matters. And in this case, the truth is these claims are flat out false. Joe Biden has repeatedly said this never happened. Mm -hmm. I think deep down he knows. Like, I don't know what his capacity is right now. Um, it's not very clear, but I know he knows. He knows. What do you say to people who say they don't believe you? That's okay. You don't have to believe me. 
I'm the one who has to live with it. It seems there was very little for you to gain in coming forward. There's nothing to gain. And in my case, I lost everything. I lost work, legitimacy. I lost my reputation. Um, I lost friendships. I lost my housing, everything, money, <laughs> everything. There's also so many people that when they needed consolation, when they needed encouragement, when they needed a hug, have been happy to get that from Joe Biden. It's an allegation that has received little coverage this election. And unlike Trump's accusers, Tara has received a barrage of scrutiny. Do you feel as though if Joe Biden wasn't Joe Biden, your allegations would be taken more seriously? Absolutely, if he was a Republican. I think the fact that he's a, an elite Democrat put him in this untouchable position. And, um, the media was biased. Totally against Donald Trump. So yes, I am gonna support him. That's an interesting decision because you believe that Joe Biden sexually assaulted one of your good friends and yet you're gonna vote for him to be president of the United States. I do believe that he did that. And yes, and if he becomes president, he's gonna be the president who assaulted my very good friend. How do you grapple with that? Yeah, I'm having trouble grappling with it. Does Tara know that you'll vote for him? Yes. Is she okay with that? Not really, I don't think. So who are you gonna vote for? Um, I'm not voting in the national election. Maybe next time.